Hello my soccer universe, what an interesting day we had yesterday at the Euros, Austria's first game unfortunately ended in defeat against France, I would call it an honorable defeat, tough and if you saw the title of the video, blood, sweat and tears, if you have seen the games you know exactly what I mean, Austria put in a shift, a lot of sweat, they drew blood from the French, which we also talked, there was quite some blood in that game and in the end it was tears, mostly on the Austrian side and mostly Maxi Ruba, who decided the game with an own goal, but more on that later as well, because I think he shouldn't feel that bad about himself there. Uh, but we also had two really outstanding games, especially results-wise. Uh, in the afternoon, first, Romania putting on a brilliant performance, winning 3-0 against Ukraine. And then Slovakia with the first true stunner of the tournament in an absolutely mad game, beating Belgium 1 0. Where Belgium missed chances, they scored goals that have been taken away from VAR. There's so many storylines in there. It was an absolutely enthralling match. But first, as always, Jersey Bingo. I got everything right. My only doubt was whether France couldn't play in all blue against Austria. But when I saw Austria red, white, red, it made more sense to have France plays in white, blue, white. And I gotta say, it looked quite fine. Although I'm still not sold on this France kit overall, although I really love the pants. But I think if it was alternating red and blue stripes for France, it would look better. And I should not forget that Romania against Ukraine not only was a matchup of two yellow teams, so one had to change, it was Homa v Homa, which is the only time that we'll get this at these Euros. And please indulge me, I'm gonna talk first about Austria's game against France, which I think overall was a really good game. It was actually staggering that there were not more goals scored than the solitary goal, which was an own goal. But both teams were always going forward. It was high intensity. And yes, it was also pretty rough and tough at the time because that's the playing style of Austria. But also France was fully in there. And while the narrative in Austria is very much, yes, a very honorable defeat. France didn't score a goal on us except for an own goal, blah, 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 with a little bit of luck. We could have gotten a draw out of this. I would say that if I look at the balance of the game, yes, Austria was well in the game and it looked a whole lot more even than I would ever expect an Austria-France game to be. It really felt like a big game. France had the clearer chances and you could tell at every point that France just have the better players. And can I just point out N'Golo Kante who put in a shift like it was 2018. The absolute anti-pressing player. He was everywhere, he took balls off of Austria. When they were kind of in a good situation, uh, had a counter-attack, it was always N'Golo Kante taking the balls off them. It was just amazing to watch. And yes, it annoyed me at the times, but when you look at it from a different point of view, it was absolutely amazing what he put in there and it was really hard to get a clear chance and this is what ultimately was the undoing for Austria as well. The game itself, great atmosphere, tons of Austrian fans there but also tons of French fans. What I found weird is that to the left was the French corner, to the right was the Austrian corner but when they put up the flags, the Austrian flag was at the French end and the French flag was at the Austrian end. That didn't make much sense to me, but hey, so be it. Early on it was clear that while Austria is playing forward, especially the left-hand side of France, is a real tough proposition for any opponent. You have the drive of Theo Hernandez and then you have Kylian Mbappé in there. And that is a combination that is just deadly. And the two of them created already the first big chance where Mbappé runs towards goal. Patrick Pence actually offers him the near corner and that's where Mbappé puts it and he gets the hand down it was a really really good save and Patrick Pence actually had a really good game uh, in the probably the best Austrian overall so it was the goalkeeper that also tells you a story. There was another CA situation where Austria in the high press just had an attack by the French or I think it was four on three or four on two. I think a ball came via Dembele who never was a real threat and then got to Griezmann who made the completely wrong decision. The biggest chance when the first half fell to Christoph Baumgartner. It was a really well played attack where Sabitzer plays a brilliant ball to Baum Baumgartner who wants to chip over the leg of Mike Menya who gets a little bit of a piece on it and it just goes by that much wide of the goal. Glorious chance. I mean this was the best chance in the game so far. And then the referee and can I just say that Gil Manzano is an absolute awful referee. Always a bias towards the bigger teams and it is not only now because of France, it is any time. 
a referee that you cannot talk to, a referee that doesn't explain, a referee that just get away, get away, get away, get away. And then he makes a really big mistake. He gives a goal kick instead of a corner. Now, this was not necessarily a decisive decision. But I would argue the French goal does not happen if there's a corner kick instead of a goal kick. It changes the complexion of the game. And it should not not be an excuse. As I said, France were the better team. France did deserve it. But this was just a boneheaded decision that no one understood. He just is not a good referee. He also, you know, the yellow cards for Austria were flying quickly. And yes, all the yellow cards were deserved. But he didn't give them on the other side as well. And that's where I have a problem with the whole thing. And also, you know, some free kicks. Whatever. But as I said, from the goal kick, 90 seconds later, Mbappé, who has been roaming freely, and this was a great move by Deschamps, comes on the right side, goes past Mvene, puts in a cross, and Werber, with a glancing header, puts it into his own net. It's clear that he wanted to save that one, because if you watch the replay, there's Thuram running in, and if Werber doesn't get there, Thuram gets up to that ball. And it's probably a goal. So Werber needed to get there. That it ends in the own net is also due to the positioning, Anton. It's unlucky. It is an absolutely unlucky goal to concede. And you could see that Werber was really not himself after that anymore. That really grated on him and his body language was not good. The complexion of the game now shifted more towards France because, you know, now Austria had to come out, had to create a little, a little bit more. And while they're always a playing forward team, it's a little bit harder when the opponent can come out of a solid defense. I'm not saying that France were defending all that much, although late on they were, but... It is not easy. For Austria, it's easier to play with a goal ahead than to having to chase a game. Second half, Frosto was still much better in, in the game. And you could see that how Weber was shaking when he completely unmotivated. And probably should have been a yellow card. Probably should have been a second yellow card and he should have been sent off. The way he tackles Griezmann into the boards, unnecessary to do that. And yeah, Griezmann with a cut up, up, up there, then he got his bandage up there that immediately went off again. Weber had to come off from that one. Then Mbappe had a glorious chance. I mean, he is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he puts it wide. That is so unlike him. This was a complete let off because if it's 2-0, the game is an easy win for France. I would argue, but that kept Austria in the game and later on Austria were pushing, however, never creating chances. It was always felt that if there's a counter-attack that is running, then France will score. Did not really happen this way. In any case, in the end, there was one where Baumgartner is sent and again a very heavy touch to get the ball to Baum Baumgartner where he then crashes onto Mike Mignon, both going, going for the ball. The biggest scene then probably came when Mbappe goes full on for a header and hits the shoulder of Danzo and he broke his nose. Ah, so much blood coming. He broke his nose there. I don't know. I mean, you could play with a mask, but I still think that immediately you shouldn't play with a mask. That was a cringeworthy moment and this puts kind of a little bit of a downbeat mood onto the entire game. This could have huge implications for the rest of the tournament. And let me be clear, Mbappe out does not do any favors to Austria. We need Mbappe to score tons of goals against the Dutch, tons of goals against Poland. But he had one last action where for some reason, and again, I said Kiel Manzan is not a good referee. Austria could make the changes. France could not make the changes and uh, their man down. So Mbappe goes onto the field to allow a break in the game. Of course, gets a yellow card for the takes one for the team and walks off. This was one action where Hilman Sano was not in favor of France. When I look at the stats of the game, France had more clearer chances, more shots and so on. Austria could not create chances. However, Austria won quite some battles in there. Had more possession, they had more passes, even more pass completions, even more corner kicks. So you say it was kind of an even game, but France was solid and Golo Kante man of the match performance. Now I'm worried about this Poland game. Poland have a day more to prepare for that when Austria put a lot of sweat and tears in there uh, and Poland will sit deeper, which is not good for Austria. So that's the game that was always worried most. I was, was hoping we get a point out of this game, then we have much better position than we could pro even afford Poland because I think we can get something from the Dutch. But Poland is the one that has me worried. We'll go now into Group E and you thought it will be Belgium romping through it and Ukraine is probably the second best team in there. I knew that this Romania team is not bad, but what they showed yesterday, boy, this was a really good performance. Also, can I say, uh, all yellow stadium in Munich looked good. The Romanian fans fully behind it. 
And then, of course, and this is the one thing that you always feel when Ukraine walks on, you know, you feel that the Ukrainian people and when they have having flags on, it also weighs heavy. Ukraine was actually better in the game and you know with a little bit more luck if Mudrik and Dovbik can combine better they might have taken the lead. So Romania scores more or less on the first real chance but it was all self-inflicted by Ukraine. I mean they have the ball, are in iron control, pass it around, triggers a little bit uh, a Romanian pressing, the ball goes to Lunin who then wants to play out from the back, plays a bad ball. The ball goes to Mann, who plays it to Stancho. It was even a badly played pass, honestly, because Stancho has to turn lean back, but he has such a great shot on their goal of the tournament so far. The way this bounces into it, just a brilliant goal. And then Ukraine were shell-shocked. Romania created chances. Stancho with a corner kick hit the crossbar as well. They were then fully in control of that game, and Ukraine were lucky to only come out with a 1-0 deficit at the halftime. Ukraine again second half tried to maybe push for an equalizer but quickly get called out on a count counter attack and Marin shot from far out did not look good for Lunin makes it 2-0 and a little bit later then Ukraine completely un unsorted Man plays it to Dragush. Looked like an offside it was just not an off offside he put it in from a short distance in the empty net it's 3-0 Romania and Romania went full control. Overall a very convincing performance by Romania and let's see how they will move on in this group. The other game though was probably even a crazier one where Belgium came out flying. Grating through Doku, two great chances that of course end up with Lukaku and of course Lukaku is missing them all because this is what he does for a living. I'm not quite fair about that but you know what do you remember from Lukaku missing big chances and then the first chance for Slovakia is parried by the goalkeeper the ball falls uh, over to Schrant. I'm about fast is too close to the goal line, so it's not, not offside, and everyone thought it's an offside. Schranz puts it in, it's 1-0 for Slovakia, completely against the run of play at that point. After that, yes, Belgium created chances, but it did not look good for Belgium. They were kind of tentative and said, okay, we'll calmly play this on. Second half though, they had a little bit more urgency and created again many chances. I said to my daughter, I don't think this can end well for Slovakia. If this continues like that, however, and well it did. Lukaku got an equalizer, however, he was offside when uh, Op Openda made the header towards him. So that one was okay. But also Slovakia had some really good chances then on the counter attack. I think they even hit uh, the woodwork at one point. So uh, it was kind of open. But for the first 25 minutes of the second half, Belgium was really pressing. And if you thought an equalizer is imminent, then it was a little bit more open again and Slovakia put in a real performance. I mean, especially the goal line clearances, that was something that really stuck with me. They were really fighting for each other. And then Lukaku scores the equalizer. And again it is called back because Openda in the build-up touches the ball with his hand with the fingers. And on the VAR screen you could see, they could see, it, they could notice because there's a chip in the ball. The vibration that there was a touch so yes it was it it, it was a handball in in the build-up it was not a handball on purpose however that doesn't matter in a build-up to a goal there cannot be the hand that's the rule is it a stupid rule probably because i don't think that he gets much advantage from it but once that was chalked off i knew this is gonna go only one way with Slovakia winning because they put in the shift and so Slovakia and Romania take early control of group E. The group that we all thought is kind of and now it has a lot of spice. With all these we also have quite some changes in the projections of course. France go back into first place in group D as expected. In group E Slovakia and Romania are now the favorites to go through and when we look at the third place teams we see that Austria is now sitting in number five so they fall out. Czech Republic who have not played yet lead that one so you see uh, based on who has played already this changes kind of daily. However most importantly with Slovakia being now top on group E this opens up the bracket especially in the France quadrant because now we have Slovakia against Slovenia in there. Slovenia would be favorites and so France would have a relatively easy quarterfinal which means that's why they also were rising high in the overall uh, favorites so much. So I thought this was the biggest change the other ones pretty much unchanged. For today we have two 
games only group f turkey against georgia that might be a very underappreciated one in dortmund i expect tons of turkish fans but also quite some georgians there this might be an emotional one in leipzig with portugal against the czech republic i'm really curious about portugal sorry guys this was a long one but since we have late kickoffs this allows me actually the editing and so on to post it a little bit later let me know your thoughts on yesterday's games did you enjoy them i think they were all three quite enjoyable games maybe the goal count was a little bit low give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these i'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye